Hi folks, today's presentation is 357 Magnum versus 45 Part 3. Please look at the other two with the bigger, heavier pistols. I try to get comparably size and comparable loaded weights because loaded weight is what matters and no one ever thinks about that. So one handed. And A zone on. Mag dropped. That's about the fourth time it's happened. This is uh, about 29 and a half ounces loaded. The Rossi RP63, three inch, six shot, 357 Magnum. Look at my full range review, pushing it hard on that and unboxing. And then the car CW45. And this loaded with 185 grain with the magazine I have right there. It is 28 ounces with 185, so 230 would be a little bit more. So very comparable size and weight for carry now this has some new mods on it look at my mods video so this has a night sight now it's been worked over it's been polished the night sight needed some fitting to kind of stabilize it so i got to see where it hits it has a galloway precision hammer spring in it so we got to check primer strikes and all that but either one should make a very good uh, easy carry which is not too heavy because doing 28 to 30 ounces some days that's a lot lighter than the 35 36 ounce carries uh so but both got big bore stopping power because you know you're going to need three four five rounds if you actually got a fire and um statistically speaking you're not as likely to need more than that now could you need more than six yeah, you could need more than six. So I say if you carry a revolver, Jim Cirillo style, always carry another one or a uh, micro nine backup like I, I do. So I got six shots are really powerful. And then I got, you know, a micro nine to back it up, which is usually as you're backing away, looking for cover, pushing family to the side or whatever, you about two seconds to draw that back up and re-engage. So there you go. Which one do you think is going to win? Stay tuned. Let's start slow before we rock and roll. Uh, because I got to see where the sights are, point of aim, point of impact, uh, to figure where my hold is with the night sight. If it's even a top or a little more orange above because of the way uh, in an enclosed range here, the way this night sight ended up working out. So uh, I got two different kinds of 125 in here. Why am I doing that? To see where they hit, uh, to check the primers, and also uh, because one of the boxes is the one that is having some bullet crimp issues. I'm trying to avoid that because loose bullet last time. Okay, so I'll go with the big uh, white bald head on the left. And I'll hold T-Box between the eyes, even across the top, I think is going to hit a little bit low. Uh, and I'm at 10 yards. I must have anticipated recoil. That one is more centered. It actually, I think, I'm surprised. And that's burying the sight. So the sight's a little too high. Uh, the way it got shimmed up with a aluminum shim, under, uh, shim underneath. That one got away from me. And I think that's it. Okay, let's see how I did. So four out of six are okay. That one is actually one that I said was too high originally. Uh, that was the one that got away from me trying to stage the trigger. The trigger's been worked over. It's very smooth, really smooth now. Uh, almost too much to stage. And uh, one low, but a four out of six. So not a great group because I try to do the best five out of six. Uh, but so far, so good. And it looks like I'm hitting just a little bit high, burying the sight even across the top. All right, CW45 starting at 10 yards. 185 usually hits a little lower than 230, so we'll see where uh, we'll see where I'm hitting. I'll go for the pretty girl bottom left. 
tea box. Between the eyes. Show where that hit. Right down below her right eyeball. I gotta see where I'm hitting. All right, so I must be pulling a little bit left. I'm hitting uh, below her right eye. Try combat hold. Uh... No flinch there, bad on me. Let's see how I did. So not bad, I must be jerking a little to the left. It seems like this has a little more trigger reach uh, than the revolver. It's pretty small heads. So if I do the best five out of six, it's actually a pretty tight group. So the best five out of six, that's not bad. That's and so kind of separate from the battle, I want to see what this can do with the super light single action now that it's been uh, polished up by Slater and uh, has the Galloway Precision 856 a hammer spring in it so far so good by the way uh, i gotta see the sights still and we're at 10 yards uh atlanta arms 125 grain jacket at hollow point probably with a nosler and at least you'll get some recoil action here so i gotta remember to totally bury and flat across that front orange meprolite night sight and it's a really light single action And I still hit about an inch and a half high, but I was in the inner circle of the head box. We'll see. Pulled that one right. I jerked right as I pulled. Right where I aimed. Okay, defensively, I kind of want to lift the, the front night sight because it's a little higher than usual, a little above the rear notch. Uh, but if I make it all even, it's hitting on the eye box. Right across. All right, let's see what I did. So five out of six, I assume that's a four inch uh, circle. Four or five out of four inches. So first couple were a little high and then I started doing these, which is pretty nice. And that's the one I called that I did jerk it to the right. Uh, but so supremely nice single action now. Very, very light, very, very uh, easy takeoff. And I'm pretty regulated with the 125, actually, if I bury and make it flat across the top. Now, defensively, at like five yards where you're more or less likely to use it, I could probably have it and just hit a little high, and that's going to be good upper thoracic. It's probably going to work. Let's find out. I try split bill drill and put a reload in there on the timer. Seven yards, 125 magnums. Do it again. Thirty-eight reloads. But I was just curious. See how slow. I don't practice my reloads often because my reloads in New York reload. Let's see if I got the times. So obviously that was just for fun and not very official. Horrible, horrible, horrible bobble draw, right? And I kept going. Uh, but 4.92 to that six shots. So till technically possibly a black run, a dark pin run under the 4.95. Um, reload 10.5, 10 and a half second reload. Now, some people can do six seconds. You're training a lot just to get to the six to seven in actual like carry gear. I didn't really plan that out. That was kind of impromptu, but it's still good to see what I could do. I got four in the inner box here. And then basically, I don't know if you count that Elan break it down to two five or not, but I mean, it's technically breaking half of the black line. So I think technically that would count. And here's at least my three down 0.25s. Um, I don't know if those are with the 38 or the 357s, unfortunately. Uh, but overall, everything's kind of a box. That's very questionable. That's very questionable. Uh, but headshots. So overall, not bad. Well, I guess I made something up. The dual split bill drills with a reload in between, which certainly puts the revolver at a disadvantage. But let's do it. Uh, and I've just got a mag thrown in my back pocket. Usually, if I carry appendix, I carry it in the back pocket. I put two mags in like this little sleeve thing. Uh, if I carry it to 3 o'clock, it might be one mag just in a carrier at the uh, 9 o'clock, the opposite hip position.
So 1.89 to first second. And 1.89 to first shot. Really slow splits. I'm going slow today. It's getting cold. I was better the other day when it was warmed up. Um, okay, uh, six shots in 5.04. So actually, I'm slower. I was slower here. 5.04. So it's interesting. Um, uh, the headshot transition was really slow because I kind of forgot what I was doing. <laughs> but I almost shot to the body and then I didn't. And then I transitioned to the head. That's what happened. Okay, uh, so reload 5.04 to my sixth shot. And then 9.52 for the reload shot time. That's really, really slow. Uh, 9.52, so 4.48. So instead of 10 and a half second reload, a 4.48 reload, usually reloads, you can, you can do two seconds if I had my gear the right way and I was at slide lock, uh, but instead I had to run over the top. It's still pretty slow. A lot of people are faster than that. And anyway, uh, all 12 shots in 12.28 seconds. 12.28 seconds, but really slow splits. 41, 42, 43. Um, some pretty slow split times. Let's check our hits. So pretty down, bad guy, but I dropped some shots low. So outside, minus 2.5, outside the A zones. One, even though it's on the spine. Two in the stomach, that would do jack shit. Three, pretty bad, maybe hitting that long, it looks like. Uh, one, two, three, and then four down there in the neckline. Now, still a pretty down bad guy. Four out of 12 shots, not so great. That's not a great ratio. That's one third. Um, so, you know, eight out of 12 being good. Uh, that's not the best. One. Now, let's start rock and roll and do some more practical stuff. Let's do some point shooting just at three yards. First up with the Magnum. In between, so I'm not lined up on either of them. Took a times. 1.6 the first shot, 1.6 the first shot from the this tactical generic leather holster, uh, appendix worn, 2 and 5 to the transition shot on her, so I did 1 on him, and then I did 2 on her, 2 and 5, and 2, uh, 5, 6, so a 41 split, and a 55 transition on her. All right, so pretty good shot on him. Now, I wasn't lined up. When you're lined up with one, it's a little easier to be a, uh, have a good alignment. But in his right lung, and then one on her dead center near the spine, next to the spine, and one up in her support hand that would go through towards her collarbone, upper chest. So still pretty good uh, on them. Let's do it once from the uh, outside waistband holster now at 3 o'clock. All right, outside waistband, 3 o'clock. I'll stand in between them. Actually, I'll do the, the Bill Jordan sidestep now. All right. Seemed better that time. 1.63 to first shot. So, Tad Slower was 1.6 earlier. 2.20 to her. So, 57 transition to get to her. And 2.57 and then a 37 split. So a little bit faster, and let's look at our hits this time. So A box, a little bit over that time. A box on him. Uh, I mean, that's really small. Either one's A on the USPSA, but that's more central line. And then two in the little inner box on her. So natural point shooting three yards with a revolver with this RP63 Rossi doing pretty good. And uh, the leather in the front. Appendix. Hey guys, what's up? Bad shot on the first guy. I would have had to go back. Yeah, 143 to first shot. Transition only 51. 194 to her. And 229 overall. 2.29 overall. Let's get one shot on one bad guy, two shots on the other. I would have had to come back to the first guy uh, if he didn't completely uh, run off. So really bad shot there because that's an upward angle. So that's just going to blow out some of his trap and his collarbone. So that's a very bad shot. Not happy about that. These two are very good on her. Uh, pretty center line and good A zone upper thoracic hits. It was 1.4 something in that first shot. So that was faster. Let's go again this time from a uh, toaster holster. Three o'clock. Use code Dan the Wolfman. Get 15% off. I cheated. I got more than six. <laughs> Let's look at her times. Because I saw the first shot was low in his belly. 
1.5 first shot, 1.82 the next, 32 split, uh, 38 transition over to her, not bad. Uh, 26 split, one handed. An A zone on her, and I got slide block back from this mag. That's nice, doesn't always happen. Slower that time, 1.76 first shot, and uh, 46 uh, transition over to her. But decent hits, I'll show you. So technically all four of these are A-zone, but two too low in the stomach for my liking, and two at a little bit of an upward angle going too high at the top of the A-zone. On her, though, much better. I had these two, one up here in the hand, and those two. So four and one just a little high. Uh, but that's okay, nicking the gun, nicking her hands, and making her drop the gun, that's okay too. So not bad, so just some natural point shooting to consider. Little retreat to attacker drill. Three point three nine overall, one point five five to first shot, three point three nine overall, one point five five, a twenty three split, sixty transition, twenty three split, twenty two split. So 3.39, not bad. I think I got off six shots. I think two of these were point shot, and then one that came back after I transitioned to her, gave her two, and then three. So three A zone, two in the inner A zone. Three A zone, upper thoracic, and three pretty good upper thoracic. That one's mad, but they're still in the A zone box. So in 3.39, not bad. All right, I'll try and do the same thing. Two points shooting, then get two hands on the gun, transition to the next guy, three, and then back to one. It's a pretty realistic thing to do against two attackers. Ah! Um, 1.73 to first shot, 35 split, 75 transition, 26 split. That's pretty fast, 43. 0.86, pretty weak-ass ammo, though. So really weak-ass ammo, uh... Gun Sam tested it. It was loaded at 38 plus P velocity, but all three A zone there, all three A zone there, 1.73 to first and 4.38 overall. Now I just want to check some like over the sights point shooting because again, they, I'm getting used to the night sight on the revolver. Uh, but basically, I want to just see some extension, natural extension. I'm not really using the sights. So I was in close range. I was pushed out this way, just kind of slide focus over the sights at five yards. Let's see how the hits were. So four A zone on each, technically breaking the line, but four good upper thoracic hits on him. One, two, three, very good. And four good upper thoracic A zone hits on her. And then I did aim on the headshot there, a little bit low. Um, so good with the CW45. But I'm using Harry's holsters. I did a full review on that. I'm not sure how much I want to scuff up the gun in it, but I may carry it with it. So here's a draw from Harry's holsters. The pod load was Freedom Munitions. It was really bad stuff. I had a gun Sam tested a lot of 357 Magnum. I said, uh, this is just Blazer, but everything's ignited so far. So, so far, so good with the Galloway Precision Hammer Spring. I just want to check natural. Yeah. So where my point is, natural, looking over, but I'm finding the centering of the uh, night site very, very well. Okay. Uh, and I think things look pretty good, pretty centered. Uh, it's very natural to point because the, the orange is giving me the reference. Nice tall orange Ameriglow night site. Well, two perfect in the A zone there. Three perfect in the A zone there. On the transition back to him, though, I must have overswung, got a really bad shot. Um, so you want to use your sights. Uh, but overall, that's showing it's pretty good with this. I should probably do a little bit more with it. All right, seven yards. I'm going to do two, two, one, one. Headshots. Mag dropped. That's about the fourth time it's happened. Carrying this again, uh, the mag released enough in recoil that it did not load. And we're in the slide again because it was too low. So that sucks. Mag, I don't know if that happened or if it's getting a weak magazine release spring, maybe, or just recoils too much. 
two decent shots on him. I prefer that higher, but oh well. One good shot on her in the inner A box. Uh, one pretty bad in her left breasticle. And a uh, headshot on him was also a little bit low. And then I ran empty, ran the slide, and was still empty. So that sucked big time. Guys, so keep in mind with the Magnum, I'm making sure that it, li it lights a bunch of different primers, which we've done today. The pud loaded shit was Freedom Munitions 158. I had set a bunch to Gun Sam before, and that stuff was like at 930 feet per second. Okay, the, um, the Atlanta Arms actually expands, so that's warm enough. Uh, with 125 nulsers that expands i ran some blazer aluminum and uh now i have never ran these before so they might be hard primers wolf 158 grain um brass but but it's wolf so uh let's see oh, i was gonna save that give it to somebody oh well let's see how the hits were Two perfect A zone there. One uh, A zone, one just above the A box in the throat. That would still work. These are 158s, so that's making it hit high. And this one's a little way too high. Uh, but also the sights kind of looking over the sights because, because again, now there's aluminum shim to stop the play in the front night sight. So it's making it a little higher. But it, that's a seven yard. So if that's the worst that I'll do, I think I got it set up as a good defensive revolver in the 125 set a little bit lower than that. All right, six rounds with the CW at 15 yards. I've been pulling left a bit today. If you didn't, I didn't say it earlier, the CW45 at unboxing and whatnot, it's a weird striker fired DAO long, but not heavy, long, very smooth, double action only trigger. It's a striker fired DAO. Okay, going hot. And got locked back, the act mag. All right, let's see. So I'll take it. These are the same eight and a half by 11, I think it is, of a USPSA target. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two on the heart and spine. Uh, that making the heart here in the lungs. That one's not great in the stomach, to be honest. But all six in the A box. One, two, and touching the line. Uh, breaking the line, so three in the little a, in the inner A and three a little low in the A box at 15 yards. All right, now six uh, rounds from the Rossi. Uh, this is the last arms core ammo. The hardest primers that I know that had problems didn't go off in a USPSA competition I did a couple of years ago. I had three rounds in a row not go off. So it might not go off, but everything else has. I'm just curious. Um, and the 158s, I'm sure they hit a little higher than the 125s. Uh, but here we go. Double action. <laughs> Last one I stayed pretty well. Um, all six fired, so that's pretty good stuff. Hopefully I made the hits. It looks like one is too high. So I hate showing a miss, but a miss happened, and they were all pretty high. So let's call those where they're hitting, those pulling a little low left, and I pulled one right high, but technically five out of the six in the A zone. So six out of six with the CW, even though three were kind of low, versus just kind of high. I think with the 125s overall, my group would have been there, and that might not have been a miss. Then I'll be carrying with lighter green or ammo. Hey, folks, so which one do you think won? 357 versus 45 today was part three. I hope you watch all three and enjoy all three of the videos in this series. This was more of the easier carry lighter ones. Do you think the Ross ERP 63, especially now that I made some mods, I did a separate video on that with the night sight and polishing up and the lighter hammer spring fired everything, even the Wolf and the Arms Core, which is known for hard primers. So uh, I'll have to check that in the future, but I think it's good to go for carry. It fired everything. Is this the ultimate carry revolver? Six shot, three inch, uh, under 30 ounces, fully loaded. You know, pretty easy to carry, pretty small. 
Uh, please let me know what you think. Or do you root for the car CW45? You uh, look at the unboxing video and other videos I've done uh, to find out more about that. Uh, the capacity being perhaps greater and everything else that I'm uh, hitting at. So, um, but I got a mag drop today and I stopped carrying it for a while and even unloaded the hall points from the, the magazines because it's happened before. It used to be a left side backup gun, actually, way back in the day before Micro 9s were a thing. This was my backup uh, gun. So, but... Uh, Left-hand shooting, it's dropped the mag quite a few times. I think this is the second time now it's dropped it right-hand. And so the recoil, it's just such a light pistol. Maybe the recoil hits it, or do you think maybe the spring in the mag magazine release has gotten weak over time? Car, can you let me know what's up? Maybe I should actually contact Car. I have no idea what their customer service is like, if they would look at it or put a new spring or anything. Dan the Wolfman. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully, guys, you enjoy it, and let me know, please, in the comments down below, which one do you think won this one? Uh, and uh, anyway, guys, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Always makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody.